welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we will show you how to replace the hard drives in a 2010 Mac Mini server. We've already shut down, unplugged, and placed our Mac Mini server on a soft, static-free surface. We are now ready to begin. The first step is to turn the machine upside down so that we can access the bottom cover. To open the bottom cover, place your thumbs in the rounded indentations and gently rotate it counterclockwise until the white dots line up. You may then lift the bottom out and set it aside. The next step is to remove the memory modules found on the right hand side. To remove the memory, gently push out on the metal retainer clips until the memory module pops up, then pull it free. Repeat the process for the second module. Use your Torx T6 screwdriver to loosen the three captive screws holding the fan in. Lift the fan up just far enough so you can detach its power connector from the logic board using your nylon pry tool. Once detached, you can set the fan aside. Next, remove the Torx T6 screw holding the cowling in place. Use your nylon pry tool to gently push the cowling out so it can be removed. To remove the antenna grate, you'll first need to remove these two Torx T8 screws. Next, we need to remove these two screws. There are 2mm hex screws and should be removed with the appropriate hex key. However, if you don't have one, you can also use your Torx T8 screwdriver as long as you're careful not to strip the corners. Pull the antenna grate out just far enough for you to see the attached cables connection on the left. Use your nylon pry tool to gently disconnect the airport antenna wire. You may now remove the antenna grate completely. There are six cables to disconnect. The first three are temperature sensors. Use the flat end of your pry tool to gently lift them up out of their sockets. Next, disconnect the power connector also by gently lifting up with your nylon pry tool. Finally, detach the two SATA ribbon connectors. Now, we need to get the logic board out of the way. First, remove the final 2mm screw from the rim of the case. Next, remove the two Torx screws holding the logic board in place. The one in the upper right is a T8. The one in the lower left is a T6. Place a small screwdriver in each of these two holes. Now push down and pull back on the screwdrivers, sliding the logic board back far enough for us to disconnect the power connector. We can now slide the logic board out of the case. To remove the top hard drive, simply lift up and gently pull it towards you. To remove the lower drive, we need to go a little further. First, we need to remove the power supply. Do this by removing the metal fastener, turning the power plug 90 degrees counterclockwise, removing the Torx T6 screw holding the assembly in place, and sliding the power supply out. It may take a little wiggling to get it out, but it will come out. Next, remove the Torx T6 screw holding the lower drive assembly in place. You can now lift the assembly and pull it out of the case. To remove the drive from the lower bay bracket, you'll first need to remove these four Torx T8 screws. Once the screws are removed, you can set the bracket aside. Peel off the black tape holding the SATA connector in place and set it aside. Then, do the same with the tape holding the heat sensor wire along with the sensor itself. Remember the sensor's placement as we'll need to place it on the same spot on the new drive. Next, remove the SATA connector itself. 
Finally, remove the three anti-static pads from the surface of the drive, again noting their positions. For the top hard drive, first remove the two Torx T6 mounting screws. Gently detach the heat sensor, noting its placement as you'll need to reattach it to the same spot on the new drive. Next, gently peel off the drive covering, being careful not to tear it. It's held in place with a mild adhesive, but you'll also notice it is taped down in spots as well. Finally, you can remove the SATA connector. You can install any 2.5 inch SATA drive, conventional, solid state, or one of each in the mini server's hard drive bays. As you can see, both drive types have the same SATA connectors and mounting holes. In this particular video, we'll be installing one of each type, but the instructions are the same no matter what type of 2.5 inch drive you're installing. For the bottom drive, first install the three anti static pads in the same locations they were on the original drive. Next, reattach the heat sensor in the same position as it was on the original drive. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow it to stick. Attach the SATA connector and secure it in place with the other piece of black tape. You can then fold the SATA connector back down so it lies flat along the bottom of the drive. Being careful of the wires and connectors, set the bracket back into place and reattach it with the four Torx T8 mounting screws. We're going to install an OWC SSD in the top bay, but these instructions will also apply to a standard hard drive. First, attach the SATA connector to the drive. Next, you'll want to reattach the heat sensor in the same place on the new drive as it was on the old drive. Next, attach the back drive covering. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow it to stay in place. Don't attach it completely though. You should now be able to hold the heat sensor's wire in place with the adhesive cover and tape. Replace the two mounting posts and you're ready to put the new drives into the mini server. Slide the bottom drive assembly into place, lining up the mounting holes. Then replace the T6 screw that holds the lower drive assembly in place. Carefully slide the power supply back into place and secure it with the Torx T6 screw on the other side. Rotate the power supply connector 90 degrees clockwise. Then secure it in place with the metal locking pin. Being careful not to pinch any wires, line up the two mounting posts on the top hard drive with the two notches in the Mac Mini. It's easiest if you gently position the drive until you feel it seat into place. Once the drive is fully seated, gently slide the logic board back into the case, lifting it to avoid any obstacles inside and being careful not to trap any connectors underneath. Attach the power supply cable to the logic board, then slide the board assembly the rest of the way in until it snaps into place. You can now secure the board in place. The long Torx T6 screw goes in the lower left corner. The shorter Torx T8 goes in the upper right corner. Finally, reattach the 2mm hex screw. Next, reattach all the connectors you undid earlier. Gently push them into their appropriate socket until they snap into place. Reattach the airport cable to its connector. You should only need to gently push on it until it clicks together. Align the antenna grate carefully, then replace the two Torx T8 screws.
You can then attach the two 2mm hex screws. If you're using a Torx T8 screwdriver to screw these in, be extremely careful not to strip out the inside. Replace the plastic cowling by sliding it into place and replacing the Torx T6 screw in the lower corner. Reattach the fan cable, then use your Torx T6 screwdriver to tighten the fan into place. When replacing the memory, note that there's an off-center notch in the memory module that needs to line up with a pin in the memory slot. Slide the first memory module into the lower slot until it's fully seated. Then, push down so that the module is held flat. Repeat the process for the second module in the upper slot. Place the bottom cover so that the two white dots are lined up. Rotate the bottom cover clockwise until the bottom locks into place. You may now flip the Mac Mini server back over, plug it in, and turn it on.